Ever since we first started studying animals, we've also been misnaming them. Many different animals on this planet can look very similar to each other, and also not be related in any way. This has led to us giving animals very misleading names, or grouping them with other animals that are completely unrelated. There are some rather famous examples of us misnaming animals, such as the whale that's not a whale, the panda that's not a panda, and the bear that's not a bear. In this video I'll be going through just a few more of these examples, as I'll be going through five animals with the most misleading names. And for our first species, we'll be heading over to the Caribbean islands, and more specifically Dominica and Montserrat, as we have the mountain chicken. Now some of you may notice that this chicken doesn't look like many other chickens alive today. That's because of course this chicken is not a bird, and is in fact an amphibian. The mountain chicken is one of the largest frogs in the world, reaching a head and body length of over 20 centimeters, and weighing almost a kilo. In their native range they can be found in a wide variety of habitats, but most commonly found near mountain streams and springs. In these areas its markings make it perfectly camouflaged, and it remains still to ambush its prey. This prey is often a wide variety of animals, because just like many other frogs they'll eat insects, but they will also eat small vertebrates, such as other frogs, snakes, and even small mammals. So now we know a bit more about these frogs, we can now dive into their confusing name. The residents of the Caribbean islands have called these frogs mountain chickens for years, mainly because of their large hind legs. These were often used in traditional Caribbean dishes, and are said to taste like chicken. The area in which they were found formed the second part of their name, which is why they have the very misleading name of mountain chicken. Unfortunately today, this very unique frog is listed as critical endangered. It is facing threats from many different angles, such as hunting for traditional dishes, invasive species such as rats, and also deadly fungus. Around 40% of the world's amphibians are at risk of extinction, and a lot of this is down to one deadly fungus. It's been wiping out huge numbers of amphibians worldwide, and the mountain chicken is not immune. As well as this deadly fungus, they also have to battle natural disasters, as Montserrat has had many volcanic eruptions over the years. This drives these frogs down to lower elevations, and often means that more risk from other predators. Luckily over recent years there's been more of an effort to save the mountain chicken, and there is captive breeding projects all over the world. So even though these amphibians have a very misleading name, they are very interesting nonetheless. But for our next species we'll be heading northwest into the United States and Canada, as we have the mountain goat. Now just like the mountain chicken, this mammal also has mountain in its name, and although this part of its name is accurate, the second part isn't. Although it may look very similar to goats, this species is more closely related to tarquins and chamois. These creatures also thrive in mountain environments, and even though they live in different parts of the world, they do live a very similar lifestyle. These mammals of course live in high altitude environments, with elevations as high as 4000 meters. To live at this altitude you have to be quite hardy and fearless, and luckily the mountain goat is one of the best climbers on the planet. Their strong legs and cloven hooves help them to maintain traction on craggy rock surfaces, and they can swiftly move through the mountains if wanted. This climbing ability helps them evade most predators, but they do sometimes fall prey to wolves, wolverines, lynx, and bears. Although you may think it's embarrassing to call an animal a goat when it's not a goat, this is surprisingly common. There are many different breeds of sheep that look like goats, and many different breeds of goats that look like sheep. The differences between these animals is often quite subtle, and often leads to a lot of confusion. So even even though this species isn't a true goat, it does have some very close family members overseas. But for our next species, we'll be heading into the oceans, as we have the mantis shrimp. Now the mantis shrimp is not one species, but is in fact a group of carnivorous marine crustaceans. There are more than 450 species of mantis shrimp alive today, and these creatures of course come in many different shapes and sizes. As well as differing in colour, these crustaceans also differ in the way that they catch their prey. Some are known as smashers, and some are known as spearers. The smashers have developed a club-like appendage, which they use to pummel against their prey, and quickly dispatch them. This club can reach speeds of 50 miles per hour, and accelerates quicker than a 22 caliber bullet. This often means that their prey stands no chance, and they can also do a lot of damage to humans too. Some mantis shrimp on the other hand have spears, which they use to impale or snag their prey. One of the things you may notice about mantis shrimps are their extraordinary eyes. These eyes almost look like that of aliens, and these eyes are some of the most complex in the animal kingdom. Human eyes typically contain three types of light sensitive cells, and these are for seeing red, blue, and green. The mantis shrimps on the other hand have 12 photoreceptors, which could mean that mantis shrimp can see colors that we can't comprehend. 
end. But once again, now we know a little more about these crustaceans, we can delve into their strange name. Of course, it is not related to the praying mantises. And surprisingly, it is not a shrimp either. In fact, mantis shrimp are in their own order and began evolving independently from other crustaceans nearly 400 million years ago. So even though these creatures are named shrimp, they are in fact much older and much more interesting. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to Southeast Asia as we have the bear cat. Now the bear cat is a very strange looking creature and can look like many different animals combined. Some say it looks very similar to the wolverines of Europe and North America, and of course some other people think it looks like a bear and a cat combined. Rather unsurprisingly, this creature is not closely related to cats or bears, and is in fact more closely related to civets and gannets. Although the bear cat is in the order Carnivora, most of their diet is made up of vegetation and fruits. Although they can more than happily live off this diet, they will also feed on carrion and the eggs of other animals. Unfortunately today this creature is listed as vulnerable to extinction, because these creatures creatures are victims of habitat loss and poaching. This is why today they are quite rare throughout their range. But in the wild, even if you can't see them, you might be able to hear them. Bear cats are very good at communicating with each other and use a wide variety of sounds when doing so. This skill can come in very handy in the wild, because the bear cat is more at home in the forest canopy than it is on the ground. But now we've established that this creature shouldn't be called the bear cat, what else can we call it? Well this creature also goes by the name of Binturong, which is a much more fitting name for this creature. But strangely the meaning behind this name is also unknown. The language that it is derived from is now extinct, and this makes this name very mysterious. So even though the name bear cat is a very cool name, Binturong is a much more fitting name. Before our next species we'll be heading over to East and and South Africa, as we have the Yard Wolf. Now just like the Binturong, this species is also a very strange looking creature. It looks both dog and cat like, and doesn't really seem to fit in with most of the creatures in Africa. Despite this, there is another creature in Africa with a very similar name, that being the Aardvark. Now the Aardvark and the Yard Wolf having similar names is not a coincidence, because these are both Afrikaans words. One means Earth Pig, and one means Earth Wolf. Even after we decode this animal's name, it's still not much more accurate. Even though the Earth part of its name is quite accurate, as it's often found in burrows. The wolf part of its name is not. The art wolf is not a canine at all, but is in fact a type of hyena. There are a few different species of hyena across Africa, but the art wolf is one of the strangest. One of the things that sets them apart from the rest is the fact that they have a mostly insectivorous diet. The majority of their diet is made up of termites, and to get at these prey items they have a very long sticky tongue. They can eat as much as 200,000 termites in a single night, but they do also sometimes feed on carrion. Art wolves are terrible territorial, and when they do bump into a member of their own species, they are able to make their hair stand on end and appear much bigger than they really are. It's rare to see these creatures in the day as they are mostly nocturnal, and as their name suggests, they like to inhabit the dens of aardvarks and porcupines during the day, which is a very effective way of avoiding predators. So even though these creatures aren't wolves or even canines, they are the most interesting member of the hyena family. Of course there are many other creatures that could have made it on this list, so if you know of any let me know down in the comments down below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these but until next time goodbye